Hello everyone, Rand here with reddragonleo.com. And uh, not much went on today. It was a holiday for the for a lot of traders because uh, the bond markets were closed. So uh, we had some really, really light volume. It just barely squeaked over 100 million shares on the SPY, which um, is uh, probably um, one of the lightest days of the year. Um, you know, just barely getting over 100 million, which of course meant that the market has a tendency to float up. Anytime there's light volume, they're going to float the market up. Now, they did not need to sell off the dollar today because they had such, such light volume. Normally, they will sell off the dollar whenever they're trying to save the market, so they just keep tanking the dollar, tanking the dollar. But today, it was uh, the dollar was actually up a little bit. But with no volume, there's nobody was selling, so no traders were there, so they didn't really need to tank the dollar. You know, they just basically kept the volume light, and uh, ended up, you know, just producing a flat day with nothing. As you can see here, it's just a, you know, spinning top or doji. So, um, um, you know, if you looked at this chart, you would say it's bullish as it's, you know, pointing up, and everything. All the moving averages are aligned here. But um, you look here and you see that uh, it is just losing all kinds of steam, all kinds of power. These days have been so, so light. You just can't rationally in your mind justify um, this thing not rolling over and going down some and selling off some before it maybe resumes back up and puts in maybe a smaller bunch of histogram towers like this right here but smaller you just can't rationally you know see it going up like that we're continuously trading sideways for weeks in and weeks out um, especially when you look at the weekly chart the weekly charts coming up against this heavy resistance line this is a major resistance line that uh, the chart pattern guys drawn in here that's critical um, and then you look here at the at the stochastics it's got a bearish touch now, that doesn't mean it's going to just roll over and just fall right off a cliff, of course, but it should at least dip down, maybe come back up, maybe something similar to this right here, and sell off a week or something, a week or two. or uh, So there should be some kind of dip as it, as it makes its way up. I don't foresee this thing putting in histogram towers like this. I mean, there was a lot of money put in the market there in the QE1, Quantitative Easing 1 program out of 2009 um, March lows, so I don't see that happening. Plus, we're running out of time. You got the November second election coming up real soon. Um, if the Republicans get in, then and they take back control. It's not likely that they are going to keep putting money in here. They're going to cap the money, and and the, and the QE2 program will probably not be passed, which should cause the market to crash yeah crash uh, if they don't get their crack uh, then you know they're gonna crash down hard and uh, the bulls have been snorting crack ever since uh, 2009 because um, this is not uh, normal bullish behavior this is not based upon any fundamentals this is based upon 100% manipulation I definitely believe we're close to a turn in the market when I don't know but I believe we're close we got trolls on the side again and uh, you know when they come around generally they're pissed off at me for something so they come and harass me so uh, so they're back so that tells me that uh, maybe they don't like me warning you guys that hey a crash is coming and put posting all those fake prints so I just don't know the turn date or when probably November 2nd after the elections um, but I would think that they would still sell off some going into it and um, you know just out of fear some of the traders should should sell um, and then once it doesn't get passed then it let, let it really tank of course if it does get passed then maybe it'll rally but I, I just I doubt it I don't think it's once it finally starts rolling over I don't think it's coming back up until it hits some fake prints you know, you got a Dow 8300 print. You, now you got that Russell print. I mean, you got tons of prints to the downside that need to be hit. 
Um, as far as tomorrow, I said on the weekend post, I thought maybe Monday would be a slight down day and uh, Tuesday would be a, a bigger down day. I still think that Monday didn't turn out to be a slight down day, but it was just flat. So, okay, so I was wrong there, but join the crowd. I'm pretty much wrong unless I just say go Bulls, you know. So, uh, but I'm just not going to do it. Um, so I think tomorrow we'll sell off some. I don't know how far, but I do think that this is going to roll over, dip down here and sell off some. And um, then I think they're going to, and this really is not so much based on the charts. My thinking here is more based on my, some on the charts, but more on just a gut feeling. Um, the charts perspectives here, yeah, we should dip down. But that POMO money that's coming in on Wednesday, I think they'll sell it off tomorrow, Tuesday, to get some bears on board as this thing is rolling over. And then jack it back up on Wednesday with the fresh money from the government, from the thugs, the gangsters. So they'll, you know, maybe they go down here and fill this gap. I don't know. That's pretty low. Um, that's a good move down. That's a big move down. Or maybe they simply just go down here and, and hit a double bottom right here and, and hit this trend line at the same, same time. And then, you know, maybe uh, trade sideways and fool everybody. Maybe a bear flag. Uh, and fool, fool them all, fool all the, just like they did here, you know, kind of sell off, trade sideways, put in a bear flag, and then boom, POMO day. Let's screw the bears. Let's steal their money again. Let's gap it up, trap them all. They can do exactly the same thing right here. And, um, and then Friday, maybe by Friday, maybe they sell it off some on Friday. Friday is options expiration, so, um, you know, they probably will sell off some. Depends, depends on whatever level that they really want to pin it on. I don't really see a lot in the charts telling me a lot. I did see something here on Cobra's blog, very interesting, uh, that the VIX here is at a major record record low. So go visit Cobra's chart and read his post. But um, he's, you know, clearly saying that, uh, you know, something big's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree with you, Cobra. It's, it's coming, buddy. It's coming. I when you have this kind of low, there's going to be a sell-off. I mean, you look here, and you've seen a big sell-off here. You look here, and of course you had the flash crash. Or no, that wasn't the flash crash, was it? No. Well, it was. Uh, it's not showing it. This is smoothed out. But well, maybe it is. Maybe it's right underneath this. Yeah, I think it is right underneath the spike. But regardless, you can see the point being is when you get these low, there's a turn in the market coming. Um, it's coming, and I do believe it's going to come probably after this OPEX is over with. It might not make it that long. Maybe there's too many calls on the on this OPEX. Maybe they want to uh, not pay off on the calls this time and instead pay on the um, um, puts. Maybe you know I don't know uh, as far as that as far as that goes. But uh, here's another one of Cobra's charts, and you can see it right there and you can see at every instance when it went low like that look what happened uh it went low like that the vix was low and the market had moved down and they jacked it up the next day and then they boom 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 tanked it um so you know maybe they sell off a little bit tomorrow and then jack it up on the pomo money i'm just speculating here folks because nothing else seems to be working okay so you can throw the charts out the window, but, you know, basically um, sell it off some tomorrow, jack it up on the POMO money, and then sell it off on Thursday and Friday. And uh, and if it's a big sell-off, of course, it can go right into next week, uh, kind of like this, but I, I don't know. I'm not going to call that right now. Um, it's best for me just to not call any crashes because every time I do, they... they make me eat mud they uh, pretty much manipulate the market to where it doesn't crash and when i say crash i mean a 50 to 100 point move really quickly that's not really a crash but uh, when you're playing options uh, that's a big move you know that's a big move so um here's another view on cobra's blog of um, the vix you don't see moves like this very often these these bullish wedges um falling wedge it, they, they play out probably 70 to 80 percent of the time they bust out to the upside when you it's rare that you see one fail like this but when you've got 
one that falls out of here, and I think Ron Walker's got uh, a chart of that. Yeah, he does. Here on the weekly, his line is a little different. He's moved his line down, but if you draw the line from here to here to here to here, all this, this was a major support line for the for the uh, VIX. And when it busted that and gapped down below it, um, that is just rare. You, you know, that you see that kind of this was clearly a bullish falling wedge on the, the weekly chart of the VIX. And when you see that, it, it would be different if our economy was, was booming and everything was great. Then, okay, maybe it'll take the 20% and fail the 20% this time as it usually 80% of the time, 78% I think is the rule I heard, that any falling wedge, whether it's on the VIX or whether it's on the SPY or anything, any falling bullish wedge when they get close to the apex um, and I think that's within like the the 15 to 25 percent of closing it when they get within that range they have a like a 78 percent chance of breaking out to the upside that's just that's just the rules I didn't make them up but and so here it is on that 20 percent chance it busted down it busted down by nothing but manipulation you can't tell me that uh this market is not being heavily controlled. So trying to, to call a, a crash when the charts pointed out are, are just kind of pointless. I can only say that when we finally do roll over, um, you know, expect Dow 8300 to be hit. Uh, when? Don't know. Don't know. But uh, they put it out there. They're going to hit it. Um, so tomorrow, just based upon a gut feeling and the charts, I think tomorrow will end up being a down day. And then I think they're going to turn and reverse it back on um, Wednesday with some POMO money. And I don't know about Thursday and Friday. But I'd say Thursday and Friday uh, could either be flat days trading off of wherever Wednesday's close uh, or possibly a little selling on Friday uh, to pin the spy wherever they want it. But just looking at this from you know past history, and you see these type of candle patterns and um, you compare it to here if you just compare it to right here you had that big down day then back up to close up and then a down day after that well here we had not really a big down day but we had an up day and then we had our flat day today so you know maybe we have one of these and one more up day I do think they're gonna have one more up day uh, and I think that's Wednesday so you know, and then uh, after that, uh, we'll have to take it, you know, one day at a time. And this, you know, depends on what, it, it just really depends upon what kind of news they release and, and honestly what they want to do. Um, I think a big move is coming. I still say it's coming. They're delaying it. They're pushing it out. From a statistical point of view, um, the week after OPEX is when you will typically have a move down in the market because then they've already let those options expire. But I was also reading Cobra's blog here and he did quote that um, he does some really good work on these look, looking up all the past um, past uh, information. He says the Dow was up 24 out of 29 uh, Monday before her options expiration. That was today. And the Dow was down four straight of five of the last six on OPEX day. So Friday, you know, maybe it's down if it follows this pattern. So, um, but he does a lot of good work on that. But, you know, me, I'm kind of going, I look at a lot of other people's stuff as, as everyone knows, I try to, to try to absorb it all and try to piece it together. And, um, and especially some of the dark side stuff, as you know, I try to try to figure out things like here on Benjamin Fulford's site. Uh, there's some stuff probably that you didn't hear about. The five bombs, nuclear bombs, were seized by Japanese authorities, and the sixth is, is still there. Uh, the North Koreans put them there. They, they, they're trying to, North Koreans are basically trying to blackmail um, Japan. And this is all about the Federal Reserve again, our gangster buddies, Federal Reserve Crime Syndicate their plot to start World War III, and they want to do it because they're going bankrupt. So, anyway, it's a good read. Check it out on my site as usual. Link's there. 
Good luck tomorrow, gang.